very good morning to you and welcome to the press conference with the president of the Human Rights Council, Ambassador Federico Villegas, who is, as usual, taking this opportunity to brief you ahead of the upcoming session of the Human Rights Council, which starts on Monday, the 13th of June. It lasts for four weeks until the 13th of July. Before I hand over to uh, the ambassador for his brief opening remarks, I should just note that I just rather recall that we sent you last night a group of some documents uh, based on the upcoming session, the A to Z document, which spells out the themes and country situations to be addressed through pre-mandated reports, oral presentations. We also shared with you a list of the draft resolutions which have been announced and also the program of work, which is still a moving target, which will change throughout the course of the four weeks. There is a press release, a background press release, which you received this morning as well in French and English, so please do look at that. Uh, and if you have any questions, of course, my colleagues, Matt, Pascal, and I are here to assist you throughout the course of the session. Without further ado, now I'll turn to Ambassador Villegas for his remarks and then to you for your questions. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, sorry. Good morning to all. And thank you for coming. And thank you for the ones connected online. Um, the session runs for four weeks from the 13th of June to 8th of July. Uh, the 2022 uh, summer session is one week longer than usual, reflecting the increased workload uh, and growing number of mandates of the Council. Maintaining hybrid format, we are maintaining the hybrid format, although the majority of participants will be in person. We have no uh, distance uh, uh, restrictions, so the full capacity of Room 20 will be available. We will have more than 90 reports on a, on a dozen oral updates, around 40 country situations, around 40 thematic human rights issues, 24 special procedure mandate holders, independent experts, and four commissions of inquiry that will give the report. Um, the, on the investigative bodies, uh, we in this session, we will have the Commission of Inquiry on the Occupied Palestinian Territory, including East Jerusalem and Israel, present, uh, that will present the first written report on the first day of the session, on the 13th of June. The report was released yesterday, and is chaired, as you know, by Navy Pile, former UN High Commission for Human Rights, and it was set up in May last year after the 31st special session of the Council. Then we will have <clears throat> the Commission on Human Rights Experts on Ethiopia that will uh, report to the Council for the first time on June 30th. It was set up in December last year after the 33rd special session and uh, it's mandated to investigate allegations of uh, violations of human rights and humanitarian law in Ethiopia committed since uh, November 3rd, 2020, by all parties of the conflict. And I appointed also the members of that commission. Um, then Commission of Inquiry on Syria will report to the Council on the June 29th. And sadly, for the long time situation in, in Syria, this is the 26th report in more than 11 years of this mandate. The independent fact-finding mission on Libya will report to the Council on 6th of July. Um, on the High Commissioner, uh, we have High Commissioner Michelle Bachelet that will present her global update on the first day of the session on 13th of June, and she will address the human rights situation in multiple countries around the globe. Separately, she will present a report on the situation in Mariupol, that was requested by the Council at its special session that we had recently on May 12th. And that report of the High Commissioner on Mariupol will be on 16th of June. Also in Ukraine, the High Commissioner will give a further update to the Council on 5th of July. Also on 5th of July, the Council will receive the Secretary General's periodic report on Crimea and the city of Sevastopol. There are other presentations by the High Commissioner that include Myanmar on June 14th, Afghanistan on June 15th, Sudan on June 15th also, and Nicaragua on June 16th. 
The panel discussions, we will have a very important panel discussions. Uh, just briefly, uh, we will have eight panel discussions on subjects that go from uh, COVID, women's rights, minorities in Myanmar, including Rohingya Muslims, climate change, disinformation, and menstrual hygiene. You can find the full details of the whole session in, in this uh, A to Z guide uh, on the web, on the whole session. Uh, this session is also special for the Human Rights Council because we decided that since it's the 50th session of the Council, we will have a commemorative event of the Council on its 50th session. It's going to be an important event uh, on lunchtime on the 15th of June, beginning at 12.30. The high-level guest will include the President of the General Assembly of the United Nations, Abdullah Shaheen, who will be here in person in Geneva. And also Secretary General Guterres is expected to deliver a video statement. The High Commissioner Michel Bachelet, of course, former Deputy Secretary General and President of the GA when the Council was created, Jan Eliasson will also participate. And the President of the Association of Grandmothers of the Plaza de Mayo, Estela de Carlotto, will participate. And this event will reflect upon the achievements made and the lessons learned of the, uh, of the Council since its first session in June 2006, that I, I had the privilege of, of being a member at that time of the Argentine delegation as a first secretary of embassy. So it's, it's meaningful for me also to be at the 50th session chairing the Council. And, um, the special rapporteurs and independent experts among the country experts presenting this session are the special rapporteurs on Eritrea, Myanmar, Belarus, Burundi. There will be 14 thematic rapporteurs presenting, including peaceful assembly, human trafficking, racism, summary executions, freedom of opinion and expression, and the recently appointed special rapporteur on climate change and human rights. Uh, the first uh, mandate that we have on this issue. And Jan Frey, the special rapporteur uh, whose mandate was created by the Council in September 2021. So far, uh, states have announced 21 draft resolutions, but we are sure there are going to be more. Um, and reminders, just to wrap up, um, the provisional program of work is available on the web. Um, Rolando, as usual, available on his team, uh, tweeting information and available for any requirements or questions. Um, and so uh, thank you very much for the interest. You know, the, the press is a, is a key actor, is part of the Human Rights Council because you are the, the voice of not only the ones that want to uh, raise an issue and, and raise their issues and their concerns for the attention of the council. But at the same time, you are the transmitters of what happens in the council. So for us, it's very important to, to continue this, this ongoing relationship that is not uh, only this event. And today, of course, it's uh, all, all the time the Human Rights Council is available to work with the press. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. <laughs> so as you just heard, we have a very, very busy uh, four weeks ahead of us. Maybe I can just take uh, questions. Maybe I'll take one in the room, AFP. Yep, go ahead. Uh, Chris Azot, AFP, thank you for taking my question. It's about um, the, the visit uh, that the High Commissioner uh, just came back from in China. I was wondering, this is a very, it was a very important visit. There was a lot of talk about it. Uh, is there going to be a, a session or part of a session that uh, that is going to be where, where the participants can ask questions to the High Commissioner about this visit? And if not, when? 
Um, the High Commissioner will present her global report and global update on the work of her office at large. And, um, and that will be on the first day, it will be on, on a couple of days, uh, you know, uh, with different, different reports. Uh, and she will address the human rights situation in, in multiple uh, countries, of course, and her activities. On her recent visit to China, that visit was not mandated uh, by the council, and it's her prerogative uh, to speak about it. And um, uh, of course, the human rights situation in China has been raised in, by different formats uh, through joint statements and uh, NGOs. Uh, but uh, it is possible, I, uh, I can only say, it's an independent body, it's her prerogative. It is possible that during her oral update mentions or uh, shares uh, details of her visit. But uh, any question regarding her visit should be addressed to the Office of the High Commissioner. Thank you. Thank you, Ambassador. And just to mention, in terms of press conferences, as you know, Gabby and, and colleagues, we often uh, get requests to hold them. The only one I can confirm now, which we haven't yet announced, it was mentioned in the press release on the COI in the occupied Palestinian territory and in Israel, that they will hold, this Commission of Inquiry will hold a press conference on the 14th of June. That's um, sometime around lunchtime. We haven't mentioned, we haven't uh, specified that yet. That's the only one we could announce at this stage, but sure enough, there will be others that we'll announce throughout the course of the coming days. So Emma Farge of Reuters, if we can unmute Emma. Good morning. Um, I was wondering if you could talk me through expectations uh, for Ukraine in this uh, meeting, please. Will there be an update on the Commission of Inquiry or a chance to ask questions um, about their work? And just a secondary question on Libya. Um, I believe that mandate is up for expiry. I can't see a resolution to renew it. Does that mean that um, that will automatically end? Thanks. Thank you. As I mentioned before in my opening statement, uh, there we will address Ukraine several times from different perspectives, um, including reports of the High Commissioner on, on Mariupol. And regarding the Commission of Inquiry, um, uh, as I understand, the Commission of Inquiry is uh, today in Ukraine working on the field. And um, we, we don't have any expectation in this session at this time uh, to have a specific uh, report to the council. Uh, but as you know, in the special session that you, we had on Mario Paul, uh, the, three, uh, the three members of the commission were in Geneva and they did a briefing before the council. Uh, and that was not uh, mandated in the resolution creating the commission, but they did it at the request of, of the president, um, they agreed to do it and they were before the council sharing uh, all her information and the way they will work. Now they are on the field. And uh, of course, the resolution creating the commission mandates a report in September and that will happen in the September session. Um, and uh, sorry, on Libya, uh, we will have, uh, at, at, until now, we don't have any uh, draft resolution regarding the mandate uh, of Libya, but as I said, only 21 resolutions have been announced and this is early, the session hasn't even started. And of course, it's uh, and everybody's uh, 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 concerned that the council continues to support all countries, including Libya, Therefore, uh, we will see it's up to member states to decide to present resolution of this kind, like in any other mandate. Thank you, Ambassador. Do we have further questions? I don't see any in the room here or online. So that tells me the press conference has come to a conclusion. So I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you once again, Ambassador, for your time and for you to your colleagues for your reporting. Again, don't hesitate to reach out to Matt Pascal and myself should you need any assistance throughout the course of this session. Thanks and have a good day.